Welcome, I'm Anthony, this is Bad Idea Metals. What I do on this channel seems to have broken down into three major categories. Well, four if you think about it, but one is I like to melt down copper and aluminum using my Devil Forge. Two, I'm gearing up and getting ready for gold recovery. I do a few videos now and then about, you know, working with motherboards or depopulating um, circuits and, and getting the, the gold bearing pins or fingers or IC chips. So we've got the, the meltdown, we've got the refinement. A third area that I like to, to record is when I tear things apart. A friend of mine donated a 55 inch TV for us to tear apart today. So today, that's what we're gonna work on. We're gonna tear this apart. If you do see behind me, I've got some solar panels. That is another project which we're gonna get to this summer. I'm so excited. I've never put together a solar system before. Um, ah, just thought of that. Solar system. I've never put together a solar uh, array with controllers and batteries and whatnot. So I've got some, some solar panels and I plan on making batteries for it uh, out of some lithium ions that I've been recovering from my laptop scrap. Look for those in the coming months. We'll get to those for today. We're going to tear apart this 55 inch Samsung and uh, see what's inside. So let's go. Okay. So this, I have my trusty magnet for it. It is ferrous. So this back panel is a very thin sheet of steel. It's highly magnetic. Okay. So I've got these, um, they're like a rubber plastic. I don't know sure there, but let's collect all of our screws. Um, you can reuse them or you can add them to your scrap steel and uh, well, whatever other metals you're collecting. Um, throwing them in the garbage. Nah, I don't do that. I try to throw nothing away. The best of my ability, everything gets recycled or reused on this channel. See what we got. Okay, so this steel sheet feels like it's maybe five pounds. So at about five cents per pound, this is about a quarter, 25 cents worth of steel. We've got our power supply and we've got our logic board. The power supply is interesting because it'll have um, aluminum and these copper bearing, what are called electric motors. We also call these transformers, but uh, they've got some fine gauge copper in all of these components. Let's see about these wires. Sometimes they'll have gold plated pins, which it looks like these don't. You'll find in a lot of the consumer grade electronics that the pins won't be gold plated. All right, we'll set that wire off to the side. Now these ribbons a lot of times will have gold and there it is. You got some gold plating right there. All right, you see right there it's got that nice gold tint to it. So this ribbon has it on both sides. The ribbon itself is gonna be mostly copper or aluminum wire, maybe steel. I don't believe this has got any steel in it, but in general, you'll have, uh, you'll have the gold contacts on these ribbons of really fine single thread copper, so. Let's pop that heat sink off. Okay. So we have an aluminum heat sink. Pretty nice. Now what we've got here, there's gonna be gold pins down in here uh, where that ribbon, that little 90 degree ribbon was. But then you'll see that there's some, some RAM style BGA chips right down here underneath this label. Oh, give to me the label. 
So we've got two BGAs right there. We don't have two on the other side. So this looks like they're gonna be the only RAM associated with this video module. This is probably a, some sort of a GPU built by Samsung. Um, you got your connectors like coax, your network, and your network jack right here is gonna have some gold contacts in it too. And sometimes these will, most of the time they don't. Um, you got two HDMIs, two USBs. All four of these will have gold contacts in them. And uh, you got one other BGA here that's kind of fancy. Other than that, you've got some, some crystal oscillators, some copper bearing, uh, I'm not even sure what their function is. But you got all this stuff here. And so we'll process these along with our motherboards. Let's go ahead and get our power module off. Okay, so here's our power module. You've got a lot of surface mount stuff on the back. You've got some MOSFET uh, transistors. You've got some surface mount uh, resistors, some MLCCs spread out. So most of that's not gonna be very useful. Yeah, you can get some of these off. They'll have silver, they'll have maybe some access to palladium like the MLCCs, but this is being, this, this is modern enough that you won't really find a whole lot of really high valued stuff on here. Oh, uh, you can see where this discolored. Yeah, you can see these two units must have gotten really hot. You've got some discolorization of the circuit board back here. So this board is definitely a used board and uh, it looks like it, it got really hot. Huh, it even says that it's hot. Anyway, whatever. Um, so on here, we've got a nice chunk of aluminum, probably about, I don't know, ah, 50 grams or so, uh, not bad. And we've got all these copper bearing components. A really large uh, capacitor here, but for the most part, there's really not a whole lot of value on this board. Um, the copper is the most valuable thing here. I would say that all together, these two boards, you might be able to get the most out of these two boards by finding somebody who's got um, this exact same model. Uh, this, is a, this is a Samsung 55. Oh, I don't remember all the different specs on it. But if you were to look for somebody who has either the, the control board is, has fried or their power module has fried, and you just post these on eBay or you, or you find a, a forum for people who are looking for support with the older TVs, sell them there. This TV was donated by a friend and uh, he classified it as non-functional. So I'm not exactly sure as I haven't done the diagnostics on it to see what isn't functioning. Um, it was donated to be torn apart. So this one's gonna get torn apart. I am not gonna try to resell these. I'm going to tear these apart for what I want which is that aluminum, those copper pieces, these IC chips, and uh, any gold pins I can find. But uh, yeah, if you're tearing these apart just for fun, um, before, you before you get too far into destruction, just know that people, people could buy these off of you as replacement parts for their non-functional pieces. So I'm gonna set those off to the side and we're gonna move on. Okay, we're done. Let's see how much more we need to do to get this black panel to come up. Ha, huh, absolutely nothing. And it's up. Let's look for a recycling mark and see what we can recycle this as. It does have a recycling mark, but it doesn't say what value. I'll have to see what this needs to go as and to whom. But uh, this channel, I don't like throwing anything away. Even the plastics get recycled. Okay, we have access to this control module down here. And then we have our speakers. Whoa, that was actually loose. Very interesting. So we have our speakers that are not actually screwed down. So inside your speakers, you've got the diaphragm. Inside that, beyond the, the diaphragm here, you've got a very fine gauge copper and a magnet. So as the impulse of electricity comes across the wire, it, it causes the diaphragm to vibrate with the air movement caused by the 
magnet and the copper coil, which is, is a little bit of a freestanding object inside there. Um, in essence, using the copper, the magnet, and the electricity, you can generate movement, which in turn generates sound. So it's pretty cool how this all works, um, but there you go. Not really a whole lot of value in there other than it's got um, the steel, the magnet, and the copper isn't worth hunting for. The copper is going to be such a fine coil. Um, I guess if this was a super enormous speaker, you might have a lot of copper. But these consumer grade electronics like computer speakers and even these TV speakers, you're not going to find a whole lot of copper. Um, the wires are going to be really thin as well. So they're going to be low grade copper in these wires. And this pin set looks to be non-gold plated. So really, this isn't going to be valued much more than maybe, I don't know, three or four cents. That's probably maybe up to five. I'd say this is probably worth about five cents right here. I guess I'll bring these back for just a second. Um, these might actually have a better value as a resale. If you know somebody who's got a TV that uses this exact connection and these would fit in the exact place. Basically, if you found somebody with this TV model and they blew their speakers out, then, then these speakers would be good replacements. Um, they are actually really self-contained, which makes them an easy, uh, an easy part to sell. Um, a lot of times the speakers tie into a, a specific place on a motherboard or something. And as a result from that, um, they sometimes get more and more difficult to try to resell. But the fact that this is pretty much a plug and play system, um, this would be a nice thing to try to resell. Okay, let's go ahead and liberate whatever this is before we unhook everything, because I like to see what we got. Okay, let's see what's behind door number one. Okay, this is a nice firm steel plate. So uh, this is about maybe five to 10 cents worth of steel. Two more screws right here. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and leave these ribbons. You can see that there's gold contacts down inside. You might not be able to see it, but I can see it, which tells me that these are gonna be gold plated as well, which they are. This is the video control unit. You can already see, well, I can see right down here, there's the, um, the, the monitor controller. Uh, it, it controls the pixels across the, the matrix of your, of your, of your screen. Uh, and we see these a lot in laptops and LCDs. So we'll get to these in just a second, but we've got a, an aluminum panel on top an aluminum heat sink right there. And if I look across it down underneath, I can see some BGAs. There's a gold cornered BGA right under here. And then this is where that other, that, that other 90 degree ribbon went. So this is gonna have, uh, I'd say if, if this was just a scrap value right here, um, maybe a few cents worth of aluminum, maybe about 25 to 50 cents worth of the gold down in that gold cornered BGA down here. And then uh, the pins, which are just barely plated. Um, it's hard to gauge. So in general, uh, you're not going to get a whole lot of scrap out of these. Oh, and I get about 10 cents per pound on these boards. And I have, so far, I see about a pound of boards. So I'd say there's 10 cents in these, in these uh, PCBs. But uh, yeah, so far, we're not, we're not breaking the bank or anything. So The circuit controls are on this side down here, so we should be able to just lift up the glass on this side. And peel them off. Now this is a giant piece of glass that you can cut yourself on, so be very careful. I take these green tabs because sometimes they've got gold fingers down on them. 
but uh, as of yet, I haven't actually found any significant value to them. But I don't like to throw things away if they could potentially become valuable. So we'll see. Now with TVs, this is the one piece that I will definitely throw away because I don't have anywhere that will recycle glass like this. So unfortunately, this is going to become landfill unless somebody watching knows what I can do with that. Um, it's an enormous thin sheet of glass that uh, I'm gonna set off to the side for now. You can see the, uh, the nice reflection of this gold plating, this gold flashing on here. Um, let's see, what else do we have on here? Sometimes they have nice sized MLCCs, but I don't see them on this one. They've got these metal clips and I'm not sure what function they serve. And then they've got these ribbons, which I'm excited to process because uh, they've got gold pins on both sides. But yeah, that's pretty nice. Not a whole lot of value, but it's pretty nice. Okay, so here, this is the tricky part on some, some monitors because of how they're fastened. I'm hoping that these are not actually riveted down. We'll see. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Okay, so I've now isolated just the uh, the, the filter and the light diffuser. And if there's any plexiglass, it'll be right here. Let's take a look what we got. Sometimes these are taped down. As it looks like that one is. There we go. So this, this sheet is really fun. It's really cool. And what I like to use these for are placemats. Um, they're really strong and durable, so you can take a blade to them. Yeah, you'll mark it up pretty bad, but it'll help protect surfaces of my workbench. So I save these as, uh, as just general placemats. And there's usually a few layers. This one is the plexiglass. It's about three millimeters thick. A little bit flexible, but yeah, in general, I like these. So I play ice hockey and I have recently realized that these simulate ice pretty well. And this one is enormous. So this will help me handle a puck in a greater distance than maybe like a little, you know, a 15 or 20 inch um, monitor screen would. So I'm excited to use this one on my hockey, you know, stick handling practice while I'm off the ice. <laughs> as silly as that is, that's where I have my value. This is actually one of the, the coolest things that I've seen today. So now that I've, I've got a look down inside here, I'm excited because I don't have glass tubes for the lighting. These are all LEDs, um, which is pretty interesting because let's see what we can do to recover those because if these LEDs work still, these would make great like um, accent lights or, or they'd probably be reusable in a, in a personal project. They're fastened down. Oh yeah, these are LED strips and they've got their power on one side and they're self-contained, which means if I can keep these from breaking as I take these pins out, they've got these pins sealing them down, then uh, I could probably reuse these. Ha, that'll be so nice. LED strips, they're getting cheaper now, but these types of LED strips could easily cost you $20 or so. Um, yeah, they're not all continuous, but they do have their own individual power. Um, I wanted to show you what I'm seeing. 
Uh, first of all, I'm seeing bugs. But uh, you can see here that this whole cord, this whole bundle of cords come out and power each one of these strips independently. And so that's good news that they're not all tied into the same wire and we can then isolate each one of these wires and provide the right amount of voltage and they'll just light up. I don't know, they might be worth 10 to $20 depending on the, the, the use and who's buying. Well, the fact that they're used, they're probably only worth a few dollars, but yeah, you could spend, you could spend, uh, I don't know, about $20 if you're buying on Amazon, you get a, a whole roll of these LEDs and their power supply, so. So I've got these wire snips, these little wire cutters. You can get underneath them, which I'm successful on that one. You're able to pull these little, these push pins down and you pull them out and that's what's holding them in place. It looks like these guys have a, a seam, which I'm not gonna mess with, not yet. But it looks like uh, you can make these shorter or longer. Oops, grab the wrong tool. So we'll keep these bundled for now, but as we play with this and see if we can get these to light up, we'll, uh, we'll start to unbundle these. can't tell you how excited I am about those uh, those LEDs. All right, well, this is one big piece of steel. If it didn't have holes in the bottom, this could be valuable as like a like a a splash piece. You can put you can put uh, projects in it that you don't want to spill out or you can put it under a water cooler or water heater. Water cooler. Yeah, whatever. But because there's so many holes in it, um, it's not watertight. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust it for a whole lot. So again, steel price being about five cents a pound. Um, I'm estimating that this is, you know, 10 pounds, maybe 15. So at five cents, 10 pounds, that's 50 cents. At 15, that's about 75. So if this, if this is more than 15 pounds, I'd be super surprised, but then you'd be approaching a dollar. Well, this is what we got. I want to thank my friend for donating this TV. I'm up for advice on the solar panels. I've never done it before, but I'm going to be making my own batteries and I'm going to be putting the panels up in that gap right above my head. Uh, that'll help minimize how much rain comes through here and it'll also help shade some of the projects because that's where the direct sunlight comes through the most. But uh, uh, keep, keep an eye on this channel if you're interested in that. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you've been entertained and I'll see you next week. Good night.